Big Bad Gary Albright of the USA, the most feared fighter in the wrestling world. His Japanese rival, Nobuhiko Takada, both men unbeaten. Tom Burton from Florida, one of the most aggressive competitors in this, the toughest of all contact sports. The Japanese ranked number two, Kazuo Yamazaki, one of the senior men widely regarded as second only to Takada. Tonight they team up for an East versus West tag contest here in Tokyo's Korakuen Hall. It's had Japanese fans queuing for hours before the show. On the bill, a rematch between the two youngsters, Kanahara and Maeda. JT Southern of the USA takes on Masahito Kakihara. Tamura and Miyato of Japan take on Nakano and America's Mark Silva. And then that top of the bill contest between the giants of Bushido, Takada and Yamazaki against Burton and Albright. As the crowd prepare for the big night of wrestling, the fighters toss autograph balls out to the fans, the tension building. Hiromitsu Kanahara against Masakazu Maeda is the first fight up. Two draws between these two youngsters. Masakazu Maeda of Tokyo, the younger of the two, 18, six feet tall, 194 pounds. Hiromitsu Kanehara of Tokyo, 20 years old, 5'11", 198 pounds. He's had the better of the two draws so far. Your commentators, American technical expert Ted Pelk and five times world karate champion Jeff Thompson. And the opening bell, Kanehara in the red corner, Maeda in the blue corner. And it looked like Maeda was just about to go down in the um, seconds within the opening bell. But now he's fighting back. I mean, both fighters would be eager to look for a result here. They've met I mean, on a number of occasions. Well, this is the second rematch. This is the third fight they're going up against each other. All their previous matches have ended up in a... Um, the time has run out. Actually, Kanehara was winning the last match, but the score was 7-5. and five, And you have to win by a clear three points. Kanehara, like we, I've said before on the previous fights, He's definitely the dominant one on the ground. Back in his, w in his school days, he was in track and field. He did weightlifting, and he was doing amateur wrestling. So basically, as far as fighting goes, he has an amateur wrestling background. Yeah, but we saw some pretty rapid work as we may, might have made for the ropes there. Like we see right there with a the submission hold. Definitely the advantage on the ground, but he has to brush up on his kicks. What Maida has to brush up a little bit on is his wrestling skills. He's excellent with the striking techniques but he has to work a little bit more on his submission wrestling we saw there might have definitely made that grasp of the ropes can he hire in the green trunks might in the silver tights and basically this fight is kind of turning out like the last fight I see Kanehara eager to keep Maida on the ground and Maida trying to continuously stay up as we see Kanehara go for the cross lock on the arm I mean for the number of times these fighters will meet, I mean, there's a, are there a number of bouts required before they make it up to the next stage of progression? Well, they just have to prove themselves. Every, all the senior fighters and the people of the commission um, look at these fighters, they see their technique, how they've improved, they, they, and obviously record has a lot to do. They take that into consideration. All the fighters work hard to work their way up the ladder. Kanihara so he's sticking the boot in there. Maida looks in trouble. And since he had all fours down, Kanihara couldn't kick to the head, but he was allowed to kick to the body. He did. And he scored it down for that. See there. Right? In that situation, you're not allowed to kick to the head. A beautiful good knee. Good combination there. But he got a little bit too close, and Kanihara picks him up. Takes him down once again, and now he's looking to apply a submission. And he's going for that same cross lock again. And it's in the middle of the ring, so 
This could be could be an interesting aspect. Oh, it looks like he'll be able oh, to roll over. He doesn't have that extension properly on yet. I mean, is there such a thing as a stalemate? If they're there too long, the referee will tell them to break? The, yes, the referee will tell them to break if they stay there for too long, and obviously nobody's going anywhere. Both of these fighters making their debut against each other. That was their first match at Yogoku Kokugikan, which is known as the sumo arena, the big sumo arena in Tokyo, Japan. As you say, a lot of sumos respect these fighters, and we've seen some of the, perhaps some of the prime seats in the crowd. Although the training and the fighting is very different from sumo wrestling, the lifestyles are very similar in the gym and uh, the discipline and kind of things they have to go in the gym to work their way up in the ladder. I mean, these guys don't join a club. I mean, I mean, how do they, how do they actually become a UWF fighter? Well, you come to the UWFI gym and you have to take a test. And if you succeed in that test, if you pass the test, and the uh, upper ranking fighters feel that you can make it in this sport, then you're accepted. You, they make you go through a series of exercises, like a few thousand deep knee benders, push-ups, sit-ups, make you run and... Well, there's no running here, because it looks pretty intense there. Maida, Maida has um, a leg lock on Kanehara, and makes Kanehara escape the ropes. And referee Wada calls for a time because one of the um, laces from Kanehara's um, shin protection has come loose, and that could be dangerous. Yeah, but I'm sure they both have appreciated that well and breathe on the leg tap and bloody an attack there by Maida. Good combination. Beautiful series of kicks. Beautiful punch kick combination. Actually, actually, the punches he was doing there, he wasn't trying to hit him with those punches. He was just trying to set up those kicks to get his defense down. And it worked, it obviously worked. The scores level, we saw there, very good combination. Left leg kick round the jaw, and as you say, Kanahara was down. Kicks a little bit, a little bit labored. Ted. Kanahara looks a little bit tired now. That last knockdown has taken a lot out of him. Sounds like Chris snapping the uh -oh, My dad was in possible danger for the belly to back suplex right there but he manages to get down into a ground position, and once again, they're wrestling on the ground. And this is quite exciting stuff when you consider they fight one another so many times. You know, it's always a danger when you know an opponent so well. You tend to fight a fight of strategy and, you know, basically holding off. It just makes it that much harder to find an opening, especially on a submission hold or something when you're down on the ground. And Kanehara knows to look out, watch out for Maeda's striking ability, and Maeda knows that he doesn't want to be on the ground too much. Kanehara. But as we say, the incentive is the desire to actually elevate themselves up that ladder where they can join the elite. Yes. Now we're going for Kanehara looks to be doing just that. Yeah, there's a modified single leg Boston Crab on him, but it's not in a bad position. The only danger is Kanehara has his Achilles tendon holding trouble. Why are they trying to get some backward heel kick there? Ooh. And they reverse it. Now, once again, Maida's on top. Now he's going for an Achilles tendon hold. He's in a pretty good position. Kanahara actually returns the compliment with a heel kick of his own. Yeah, he's using the point of the heel to try to kick it off. And now he has his own Achilles tendon hold on, and we see referee Wada with a double shoot sign. Is that a technical desperation there? And, uh, Maida once again in the ropes. And both looking, as we see there, almost a dive for the ropes there. So far, the score has been pretty much even. This is a 15, this match is, has a 15 minute time limit, and we have just about three more minutes to go. Ooh, good, kick there. good kick to the head. They're putting in two kicks there. Kind of hard was down. Kanehara managed to block it, but. Taking the count. Still was enough to knock him down. Not a seeming to have the upper hand now. Well, if he continues with his striking, his striking ability, he better watch out. Oh, here. Ooh. 
Kind of how it a beautiful, so look at that, right on the back of his neck. I wonder if it's all right. He looked like he broke his neck or something. I hope not. Maybe. No, he looks all right. That looked pretty dangerous. That, that, su that suplex, he dropped him right on the back of the neck. Referee Wada has to be on top of this. He might have to stop it. Could see that first little important win between these two fighters. But as we say, safety comes first. Referee Wada has to be on top of the action the whole time to pre prevent serious injury, which can happen at any second or moment. Maida takes him over. Very tired now, the techniques are missing. There's not that focus and, and crisp delivery that we've seen in the early part. Oh, they've taken too much punishment. It's really taken a toll right now, and you can see it. And is this where we're really seeing the title of junior rank beginning to be targeted? Because, as you say, the experience isn't there now, is it? Well, this is when the submission holds become very dangerous. They're both tired, they're out of steam. And that's that's when you can see an opening for a submission hold and take it. Well, referee Ward is one of the, one of the top referees. So I'm sure he'll make sure both fighters come through this. But both fighters still got a design and a passion to look for a win. Now the ground action has been broken and they're standing up once again and Maida has his advantage. But he's lost a lot of steam on those kicks. A lot of those kicks that he's throwing right now aren't getting in. And a lot of swinging now on the inside. Oh. Oh, that was a good knee though. Ooh. That worked. Both fighters just there on grit now. The knee, knee strike there from Mano. Didn't oh. seem a lot, but seems to have done the damage. Oh, he's good, having good success with his knees. Obviously, his punching and kicking has lost a lot of steam. His punching and kicking ability. Oh, signals that he's still, still ready to carry on. Not much time left in the bout. They're going to have to do something, or this is going to... They're going to run out of time for this for the third time. Another draw on the cards then, Ted. Do you think so? Do you think we're going to have another draw? I don't know. I, I, I'd still like to think there could be a bit of excitement here. I don't know. They're both pretty tired. Anybody could just move in. There you go. Anybody could move in right now and get a submission. And we have another down. Oh, the drops of Nina can only be a literally seconds on the clock. This is a very close one. And there we see There it, it is again for the third time. But exciting stuff when you consider their junior rank fighters. Most impressed. Well, the third draw, and they're going to have to have another rematch to prove who's on top and who's going to work their way up the ladder for the next fight, the stars of tomorrow. Well, two tired arms are held aloft. I'm sure we'll see more of these guys. Draw number three, then, for Kanihara and Maeda. Next up, JT Southern of the USA against Masahito Akihara. JT Southern! JT Southern from Tennessee in the USA lost last time out to Nakano. In fact, has lost all three of his fights. Masahito Kakihara has fought once since coming back from a serious injury, and that was a shock defeat by Tom Burton. Kakihara coming out of the red corner. JT Sun now the blue corner. This is a very, very exciting opening flurry there by Kakihara. Beautiful well. heel strikes. Do you see those? Oh. JT Sun is almost kicking on the retreat there. He sees he's in trouble already. Yeah, that, and he that, knows it. That's retreat kicking, kicking and oh, the slip there. And just knocked him off balance, and that's his chance. Once again, JT Southern with a height, weight, and reach advantage, but Definitely, Kakiara has the striking ability, and I don't know about the submission wrestling, but we'll see. Kakihara in the long black tights, and JT Sutton in the black shorts with the white stripes down the side. And those wrist, wrist stram, um, straps, I mean, Kakihara's actually got them over those distinctive um, color bands that are worn. But could that affect uh, referee Wada's ability to assist the belt? Well, he knows who the fighter is. Um, Kakihara's fighting out of the red corner, JT Southern out of the blue corner. Well, we got one Japanese guy going against an American guy, so that should make it pretty simple. Okay. The black hair versus the blonde hair, right? Okay, I'll go with that. And actually, JT Southern 
gets the first what? point, scores the first point. I suppose another difference is the size. <laughs> oh, look at that beautiful low kick. JT's in trouble. He's throwing kicks, but all, those, all of his kicks aren't offensive. They're just defensive kicks. And, and he's in the corner defending all the time, and that's serious um, territory advantage. See the difference of the kicks? Kakiara's kicks mean something. See, they're bothering yeah. him. JT Southern's kicks, they're just um, defensive kicks in desperation to try to move him back to scare him, to intimidate him. Obviously, they're not working. They're not intimidating Kakiara at any time. Oh, no, that was a good low kick. And yeah, I mean, Kakiara knows what he's about now. He's just going for the kill. Absolutely no defense against the striking ability. Oh. JT Southern's really going to have to prove himself in this match. Well, I don't oh. think he's going to get the chance to. Kakiara seems pretty intent as he gets the count here. JT Southern has been ha has had a number of fights with the UWFI, but so far his, he, he doesn't look like he's improved on defense against those punches or kicks. Can you tell me, is there, is there any penalty to the referee step in if there's no obvious defense? Because, I mean, it's pretty dangerous in there. Well, that's up to the referee or doctors if somebody gets hurt, and they'll deem it a TKO. It doesn't seem serious yet at this point, but it could be. And that's why referee Wada has to be on top of the action at all times. And a beautiful low kick. Did you see that? Yeah, as you say, never in competition. The face shouldn't show the expression, but JT Sutton certainly showed the pain there. But no incredible. Ooh, that was a good throw. But he didn't get, Kakiara didn't get a point taken off for that. The referee obviously thought that that maneuver didn't have much uh, enough of a bridge to score a suplex point. And you notice when JT Southern is blocking against Kakiara's low kicks, he is lifting his leg and trying to defend it, but Kakiara's just a split second too quick, and he's actually blocking after he's getting hit, which means nothing, and is actually tiring himself out more. Yes, as you know, there's a lot of energy expelled, but no, this looks interesting. Kakiara could well get the submission. See Achilles tenon hold. And a very weak defense being offered up by, the, by JT Southern there. JT Southern's stuck in this position. He better just escape to the ropes right now. Kakiara is not going to let go of that Achilles tendon hold. And I don't think he's going to let him get near the ropes. I mean, Wada doing a brilliant job. It's a difficult one to call here. Yep. For an instant, it looked like he had the double shoot sign on, but obviously Kakiara with, with the upper hand. He's definitely the more dominant one with um, an exchange right there. And now he has the heel hold on. And that's bad. Uh, but Southern made him with that, that, that desperate grasp for the ropes. Yes, but he's in trouble. He's taken too many low kicks, too many submission holds on the ankle. He's going to lose his footing quickly. And that's when Kakiara's going to move in. As you said, that was a two-handed grab for the ropes. And I think that shows the pain and trouble he's in. And you notice that JT Southern's hands are starting to drop. Well, to be perfectly honest, Ted, I didn't really see them come up <laughs> so far. He's, oh, I mean, yeah. I mean, almost, Kakiara almost like waving him away. Three. Oh, JT is going to have to show a little bit more heart, well, more technique or something. He's going to have to do something quickly right now. For me, this is about pride now. You've still got to hang in there, and I mean, Kakiara is now getting flamboyant, I'm just going to job in a very professional way. No, actually, I don't know. I don't think Kakiara, he, he was kind of showboating there. He was going for a big kill. He tried a spinning back kick, which missed. He shouldn't get too overconfident, but look, yeah, but, single hey, leg boxing. No grab. mistake there. Oh, he's ecstatic with that one. Look at that. There you go, some Western expression. And boy, is he happy. The third match after his injury and another win. Kakihara continuing that much. He did come back with flair, flamboyance, and style. Boy, what an excellent win. And what a beautiful finishing maneuver, too. Excellent. Coming up now, the first of our tag matches tonight and our first look at the American, Mark Silver. Tatsuo Nakano from Ibaraki, 28 years old, one of the veterans, very short and very powerful. Mark Silver of the USA, his first outing, 23 years old, 6'2", and again, a big man, 230 pounds. 
Kiyoshi Tamura, traditional all-round wrestler, feared for his choking submission holes. And Yuko Miyato of Kanagawa, speciality, the spin kick. It's quite a combination. Tamura and Miyato in the red corner, Nakano and Mark Silver, who we're seeing for the first time in the blue corner. And the match looks like it's going to start off with Miyato versus Nakano. So it opens with a bit of excitement. <laughs> yeah, Miyato doing his now infamous hand combination, just dropping the arms there. I'm surprised he threw such a high kick so early in the m match. I think this is a case of setting out one stall. I don't know, they're calling a time for some reason. I don't know what happened. Yeah, Miata seemed to catch his eye on the ropes as he went out. Maybe it was a finger in the eye, possibly. Yeah, but it seems okay. As you say, the arms are dropped. The style's evident. Now he's working off those kicks. So far, Nakano's be been able to defend those kicks pretty well. Nakano with the distinctive name, <laughs> name on the back of his trunks. And Miata with the gold yeah. lettering with his name on the trunks and the UWF logo. Right now he's going for a face lock, a front face lock. This is the first of two tag bouts tonight. Yes, it is. And um, I'm, during this match, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing Mark Silver. Mark Silver stands at six foot two. He weighs 230 pounds, only 23 years of age. And he looks like he could be potentially a deadly fighter. Well, here he is, his first time, his first taste. Let's see how he fares. Mark Silver has an amateur wrestling background and he's actually wrestled professionally in the United States before, but this is his first match in going up in the UWFI. Would he have had some of the karate skills, kicking and punching skills added to his I don't know, but whoa, did you see that? <laughs> he takes him over with a beautiful suplex. Look at this one, he can wrestle. Beautiful gut wrench suplex over there and he's taking him down and he's actually up going for a double wrist lock or an arm bar right now. So Silver giving a good account of himself. He's really physically gifted. I mean, standing at six foot two and weighing 230 pounds. He's the heaviest one in this tag right now. Well, let's hope he makes a heavy impact. But Miyato has an Achilles tendon hold on him. They're in the middle of the ring. Doesn't look like there's any immediate danger. Mark Silver trying to throw some punches there, but having very little effect. I mean, look, oh, well, there's a change, and here comes Tamura. This should be interesting. Well, from what I've seen, Mark Silver looks like he's only into wrestling. He looks like an excellent wrestler. I haven't seen any of his striking ability, and this might be interesting because Tamura himself is more of a wrestler than a striker, striking type of fighter. I mean, would someone like Silver have had a chance to train with the rules and the technique, or is this a case of well, he's in you go? He's gone over the rules. He knows the points. He knows the rules. And well, basically, this is his first time up. So it's a bit like swimming. Swimming, you sink or swim. Well, he's going to have to prove himself tonight. He's going to have to show that he has something and he's worthy to stay with the UWFI. Well, he's got a good chance. Because tomorrow is no spring chicken. Yeah, this is going to be much more of a wrestling match. But Tamora does have the advantage, I feel, with his obvious kicking and all-round ability. Oh, definitely. Even though he's more of a wrestler than the striking kind of UWFI fighter, that doesn't mean that he can't kick. He has all of the ki kicking techniques. He knows how to punch, knee, um, in addition to his wrestling skills. This is the first of our tag matches tonight. Tonight's main event is going to be 
Gary Albright and Tom Burton squaring off against Takata and Yamazaki, which would be a great fight. So you want to await that one with interest. Right now, both fighters trying to look for an opportunity to apply a submission hold. Tamara's found it. You notice how he hooked the leg, brought the head down, and now he's going for the cross lock. If he can break that grip, which he's trying to do. But nope, Mark Silver manages to um, put his leg on the rope, and he loses a point, and the con action continues. Does we see there, Silver giving a good account of himself? Yes, Silver's pretty good. Uh, he's he's sh showing an excellent amount of wrestling skill, technique, and ability. But still feel losing it when it comes to the toe-to-toe -to -toe oh scenario. Oh I think tomorrow could well take the upper hand here. And I'd have to say that Mark Silver actually looks physically m more s um, stronger than Tamura. And you can obviously look at the difference of the bodies, 230 pounds going up against 200 pounds. That 30 pound difference is definitely gonna be a factor in this match. Mark Silver shouldn't be standing up because Tamura does have that ability to kick. Oh, there you go. The kicks are coming out, so Silver's obviously, obviously realized that he's gonna vary and bring about something a bit more to try and take go gain the upper hand. But you notice Tamura wasn't even blocking him. He just stood there and took him. He, he obviously doesn't have any respect for Mark Silver's striking ability. He found that on earlier on during this match. <laughs> You'd like to see him do it against someone like Takata. Now we see Mark Silver going for that cross lock on the arm. But Tamura is managing to defend it. He's rolling out. He's in no immediate danger. And now he's going for the cross lock on the leg. That was incredibly fast. And referee Wada moved equally as fast. Well, referee Wada has to be on top of this. We've seen many injuries before. And you have to be on top of the action. I think, I think Silver deciding then, as we see it, that, that leg was pretty straight. Some of these guys, they're just so pumped up before the match that they actually, they just, they, they won't give up, and the referee has to be on top of it and know when to stop a match when a fighter is not willing to give up. Silver takes a break and allows Nakana to come in. As we can see now, Tamura taking it a little bit more seriously, one would think. Well, I don't know, Tamura's been wrestling for a few minutes with Mark Silver while Nakano's had a chance to actually have a break. So, obviously, he should have more energy now. Tamura might be looking to want to tag into his partner. Well, it's a long way from the center of the ring to one of those corners or the ropes. The strategy of the tag matches, or any uh, the matches that they have, is to try to keep your um, opponent, try to keep the fight in your side of the corner. So in case you get in trouble, you can escape and tag in with your partner. You never want to be fighting in the opponent's corner, the enemy's corner. Well, we, we saw a man grasp for any corner there. Tamura looked in trouble. And here he tags out. As we see there, enemy's corner or neutral corner. Beautiful heel hold. Own. Now, right now, we have um, Miyato going up against Mark Silver. Mark Silver's going to have to watch out for Miyato's striking ability. He's in definite danger. There's no real big technique yet that's come out from, from either four of the fighters here. Oh, but we see a kick and that go looks like it landed in the mouth, in Mark Silver's mouth, and he's in trouble. Short, but was that effective? And he gets the count for it. Here it is. Boom. Oh, yeah. He was lucky that only the instep connected to his mouth. If it was a shin, he might have broken all his teeth out. <laughs> and his jaw. <laughs> but he looks okay, and Yeah, showing good spirit. But Miyato's seeming to want to take the upper hand now. Mm -hmm. What Mark Silver should be doing is using the, his extra 30-pound weight advantage to, to his advantage. He, sh he, sh he shouldn't be standing up. He should stay on the ground. Referee Wilder's shoot sign indicating. An amateur wrestler's stance is so susceptible to, like, a spinning back kick or a middle kick or a knee or even a strike to the head. Tamura almost almost bullying his, his tag partner to come in here and get some of the action. And you notice oh. you notice he's throwing those low kicks which are working for him. Usually you don't see Tamura throwing too many um, striking moves or doing kicks but 
That's one thing Mark Silver's going to have to watch out for. It was that kick right there. Yeah, and it just didn't seem to, you know, didn't seem to come with any sort of speed, but certainly did the job. And actually, Mark Silver looked like he blocked it, but maybe he was a, um, a second too late. Blocked it with his thigh. Like I said earlier, an amateur wrestler's stance is so susceptible to hits to the head, kicks to the body, and kicks to the leg. Must be, oh. They have to be. They have to watch out about that. Oh, he'll be, he'll be, he'll be, oh. Single leg Boston Crab, and he makes Mark Silver escape to the ropes once again. Gotta give this Silver credit. Well, he's in trouble. There's the corner. <laughs> oh, he comes rushing in. <laughs> Beautiful reversal, though. The sleep hole being attempted. Uh oh, you better watch out for the suplex. No, he's. Nakano is applying the chicken wing face lock. Chicken wing face lock, grief. And now he's hooking the body so he can't escape, but Tamara just barely manages to extend his leg to the rope. Boy, that's deadly. Let me see again, my word. Look at the pressure on the elbow and the face. It's a face lock with a, an arm bar. Ooh, beautiful kick to the head. Did you see that kick to the head? Yep, and Nakano's German for it. suplex. Uh oh, he's trying to go for it again. He's pulling up. Mr. Entertainment seems to be actually delivering the oh. important blow here. A double Ooh. belly to back German Three. suplex by Nakano. Oh. The second one didn't have oh. as much effect, but he was still stunned from the first one. Belly to back attack by Nakano. And you can't tag in with your partner during the count. Look at him go about Here's his the second business. one. Oof. The first one was more deadly, it stunned him more. Mark Silver comes over, but he, did, he he didn't manage to get work enough of a bridge or an arch on that one. This Silver seems to be learning quick. He's doing pretty well. Yeah, but the arch is going to come, I think, and soften him up a bit. There He's going to come. Here it is. There oh, it is. Spinning back kick. I told you an amateur wrestler's oh. stance is so su susceptible to those kicks. Three. Yeah, no defense whatsoever. Oh. And that's one of Miyato's favorite moves, the rolling, what he calls the rolling Savato. Well, he survived the count, he's prepared to carry on. But Miyato's going for it. Ooh. Beautiful front suplex. Mark Silver's oh. in trouble, he's taking the rolling Savat. And another count there, Tim. A front suplex, a kick in the mouth, and oh. he's in trouble. Do you think the referee Wada will allow this to continue? Well, he's tagged out, and now Nakano's in. Nakano's <laughs> so gonna try and take a bit back on that. Oh. <laughs> I mean, we are seeing two of arguably some of the, the most exciting fighters in these two. I mean, they've got such similar styles, and it's an all-round exciting flamboyant. Oh, it's ex exciting whoever's in that ring. It's amazing the technique, the speed, the moves, everything is there. Two kind of trying to work off some knees in Tamura. Tamura trying to fight back. Oh, Ooh. that was almost like an uppercut. That was, with, that was with the heel of his hand. Well, for all you boxing fans out there, there's an uppercut without the fist. Look at this. Both guys are developing some pretty nice cauliflower ears, if you if you noticed. <laughs> oh, but Tamura's coming back. Looking for the big one. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, the back's in trouble there. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Nakano's in bad trouble there in the middle of the ring. Yeah, I don't see him giving up. Though. Beautiful sleeper hold. But Nakano's not giving up. Nah, he's too, he's too tough for all this. Hold Look at that. It's finished. He's not giving up, though. Look at it. He's turning all yeah, red. Yeah, referee White is going to have to come in here, I think. Nakano changes his face, changing colors like a chameleon right now, but he's not giving up. Referee White has to be on top of this. Nakano's out. Good Nakano's three. out. He, he looks like he's unconscious now. Yeah. Look, look. Yeah. Look at it. He's out. I don't know what the referee's doing. Oh, looks like the doctor. Oh, hold on. And he's getting an, uh, He's getting a count, but that man's got up on his feet. Amazing. That's incredible. But he's out on his feet. I don't know. Referee Wada might have to step in and stop this. I mean, as we see there, he seems, as you said, there's a comedian change coming No, here, here. He's, here we go. Another sleep. He's out. He's out. The referee no, no. has to stop it. Referee Wada's right got to come in here. No, he has to stop it now. If he's waiting for that submission from Nakano, he he's won't get it. He's not fighting back. Nakano's not fighting back. He hasn't given up, but he hasn't. He's not fighting back. It's finished. This could well be very serious. Here. I mean, referee Wada should definitely be stepping in, in my view. He should step in.
Tamura. I don't know what referee should be stopping this right now because it doesn't look like he's. Oh, Tamura's shouting that he's finished. He's 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 screaming Ochtedio, Ochtedio, which means he's unconscious. Stop it, stop it. As you can see, out, but the spirit's still there. That's a fight, but as you say, count it out. And Nakano actually passed out before he gave up. This is the reason why referee Wada has to be on top of the action at all times. Well, the winners, Tamura and Miyato. And now what the crowds have been waiting for, top of the bill, the top tag match, Japan against the USA, Yamazaki and Takada against Albright and Burton. Takada and Yamazaki, you're ready, the number one tag team in the UWF International right now. Myself and Gary Albright tonight will prove to all the Japanese people and the Americans right now that we are the top team. I'll tell you what, Yamazaki and Takata, you guys are, are fast, you're quick, but the thing about the Americans is that we're big and we're strong. You guys can kick and kick and kick, and we, we, I'm pretty sure we'll be able to take a lot of your kicks, but I don't know if you're going to be able to take the strength of Tom Burton and the strength of Gary Albright and last 60 minutes in the ring with us. Gary Albright, they call him big and bad. He's both. He's the number one American on the UWFI circuit and the biggest man in town. Tom Burton of Florida, a less successful record, but still highly competitive. It's a fascinating combination. Nobuhiko Takada rated a number one in Japan, the man with the most experience and the biggest following. And he's partnered by the number two on the circuit, Kazuo Yamazaki, again a veteran, 31 years old. Well, I don't know about you, Ted, but I can't wait to see this bout. This main event is some kind of matchup. The two best Americans in the UWFI going up, going off against the two top Japanese fighters. Takada Yamazaki in the red corner, or Bratton Burton in the blue corner. And now we got Burton going up against Yamazaki. Pre-fight talk from Albright and Burton would suggest that they've got strength and size on their side. What do you say, Ted? Oh, no doubt about it. I mean, they have the strength and the size, but the Japanese obviously have the speed and the technique. They have the all-around kicking ability, the striking ability, plus the submission holds and wrestling. So it's kind of hard to say. Basically, in these tag team bouts, what you usually do is try to attack the weak link. You try to not let the strong guy in. It's kind of hard to say, but probably for the Japanese team, they're trying to keep Tom Burton in the ring. They don't want Gary to come in the ring. Well, there seems to be a lot of pride at stake yeah. between these two teams. And as we've seen before, I guess, for the American team, they probably want to keep Yamazaki rather than Takata in the ring. Well, Takata, the superstar of UWF. But then again, Yamazaki is no pushover we'll as we've seen before we will put it this way i would definitely take him seriously if he stood in front of me so it's kind of hard to say who's actually the weak link in this i don't see any weak links to be honest this this really is going to be something worth waiting for yamazaki trying to apply that heel hold on burton and it works but they're too close to the ropes and burton lost a point for that but the action continues both teams starting with 21 points, and the bout lasting for 60 minutes. I don't think it's going to last for 60 <laughs> minutes, though. But then again, all four of these guys are in such great shape. They have so much stamina, but then again, they have so much great technique and everything. I, I just can't see this thing going the distance. Uh, I can't really see it. That was wishful thinking. I thought we'd get 60 minutes of all, all action from these guys, but... That would be great, but Yamazaki twists around and he tried to go for the cross lock on the arm. Once again, he has Burton escaping to the ropes. And Burton looks like he actually got hurt on that cross lock. He might want to tag out. And that's Takata against Gary. He's just in slow motion there. T 
two points. Now this is some matchup. Oh. The I'm top, the top American versus the top Japanese. You can always cut the atmosphere. Did Takata try throw there? No, he tried to go, <laughs> go for um, a single arm throw, but I think that size and strength <laughs> actually showed up there. Well, actually, more than a throw, if he could manage to just trip him over, <laughs> like actually, y like um, use Gary's size against him, like take him off balance, then he could throw him, but. He wasn't. Lo he didn't have enough in that one-arm drag. Now, actually, Gary, even though he's on the mat, he looked well. He lost it, but he looked like he had the advantage. And now, Takata quickly turns it around. He's going for the arm lock. Now he's going for the cross lock on that arm. Shoots I from Rajiwada. Yeah, but Gary has a pretty good grip. It, it's going to be hard to break that. Grip. But he manages to break the grip, and he actually has Gary escaping in the rope. Gary's team loses another point. And Takata's team hasn't lost a point yet. No. Three points ahead. Takata has a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful heel strike. Beautiful kick to the head. He's in trouble, and he's going for a suplex, which is really stupid. Yes. At that moment, to go up against Gary, I think he got a little bit over, a little yes. bit overconfident with that one. You don't try to go for a suplex. You don't try to suplex each other with Gary. But what a reply from Olga under pressure. And the sparks begin to ignite. Look at this. Takata wanted to show he had something. Yeah, and Albright returned the compliment. <laughs> oh, a beautiful knees. <laughs> Spinning back kick. A bit more timing, a bit more uh -oh, distance. He, he better do something. Ooh. Kick to the side of the head. Gary's actually in trouble. Yeah, but that kick missed its target. Albright actually and he passes it out. over. Beautiful knees. Yeah, finding their mark, but Albright has so much midriff there, but that kick just missing. Here, you know, um, Gary was trying to go for the suplex. He was trying to look for an opening, and Takara was doing the same, but ooh, beautiful crescent kick by Yamazaki. Yeah. But, uh, pretty, but not quite effective. No, you saw Burton caught that, and he's doing pretty well with the, his defense tonight. And now he's going for an ankle lock on Yamazaki. Well, Yamazaki's trying to apply an arm submission. He's looking for the opening right now. He's in, neither fighter is in immediate danger right now. They're just looking for that opening, and Yamazaki seems to have the upper hand here. Now he's going for a body scissors. Trying to keep him stationary so it's easier to look for that opening. If your opponent is continually wiggling around, it's really hard to grab that arm or leg. Runs an expression there from Burton. And Yamazaki actually has a chin lock on him. Look at that. Grief. No. <laughs> Usha said Burton. No. So two points in it. Yamazaki and Takada actually lead. Burton got hurt from that. And he tags back in with Gary. Ooh, this should be an interesting one. Look at that. A beautiful chin lock. And, well, unfortunately, Yamazaki is going up to Gary for a second consecutive match. We remember he went up when he, he was a team with Anjo going up against Gary and Jim Boss last time. Oh, Ooh, beautiful leg stamp. Straight leg kick, but look at the power. He just takes him. Uh-oh. <laughs> now he's going to pass over both tags, Strange, there. You notice Yamazaki didn't break his fall correctly, and he hurt his back. I don't know how serious it is at this point, but... If there was any weakness in the pairings, do you see this as being it? Well, oh. well we've seen Takata beat Tom Burton before, and... Oh, taking those kicks while on his knees. Oh, and the back pull. on his back. Oh. No, um, Burton actually blocked that kick. You notice he had his hands up and he was blocking it, so... But he, it did go through. You wouldn't believe how powerful Takata's kicks are. That's what I was about to say. Look at this here. Yeah. That, the, the hands meant nothing. It that. went right through. <laughs> But just think of what would happen if he didn't have those hands up. Well, I think the helicopter pilot's license would have been in evidence there, but... But Burton takes him over. <laughs> Nothing serious. He's just trying to set him up for a submission hold. And he's going for that cross lock. Shoot sign from referee Wada. But even if Burton manages to pull that cross lock off on his arm, he's he, he's too close to the ropes. Takata will be able to escape. But right now he's not trying to escape. He's trying to actually counter it and put his own submission hold on. And Burton's in trouble. Albright looking 
looking on. Is there a hand there on the ropes? Yep, yep and they break it. And that's one more point for Takata's team. Low kicks. Burton shouldn't just be standing there blocking kicks. I mean, Ooh, spinning back kick, didn't quite find the target. Burton should move in and wrestle with Takata. That's his only chance. He shouldn't be just sitting there continually blocking. There's only so many kicks that you can block. After three or four kicks, one is bound to get in there. Is that a bit of showmanship from Takata there? Albright leaning back. And Takata's looking. Yep. Tom Burton goes in the tag, and once again we see Takata versus Albright. But neither are rushing in right at this point. They want to see what kind of artillery each other has. Yeah, well, the artillery of Takata's left instep found its way across Albright's jaw then. As we know, although, you know, we've um, Takata's probably been watching tapes and everything, this is the first time Takata and Gary are actually squaring off. Ooh, belly to belly front suplex, and Takata is down. And he loses a point for that. That was a point for Gary's team. Yamazaki and Takata still leading by five points. But as you say, that means nothing when you've got guys at his caliber. No, anything can change at any moment. Look at this beautiful belly to belly. Just takes him right off. It's almost like the, the wind is like taking him off of his feet. Put it this way, Albright's got a bigger belly than Takata. Takata on top, he's probably, yeah, he's going for the kicks, which is a very good strategy. He doesn't, he doesn't, he's not anxious to go down and wrestle with Gary. Yeah, but he doesn't want to get his leg caught like that with Albright, I would think. No, he has to, but he has to do something quickly with it. And now Gary's trying to apply a submission, a leg lock submission hold. But Takata is trying to reverse it. I mean, the strategies, there's a pretty disciplined strategy. Do you reckon the fighters have had a pre-fight decision on what they'll do? Well, obviously, the strategy of the Americans is to get inside, clinch, take him down with a suplex. Well, Gary's strategy is just to hurt him with a suplex. For Burton, it's probably just to take him down with a suplex so they can set up a submission hold, keep him on the ground. The Japanese are just probably looking to work those low kicks off, take their feet away, and after they're tired and gassed, he wants, they want to take him down and look for an opening submission hold. That's what Takata's doing right now. He's looking for the heel hold. Look for the heel down, Norbert made it to the ropes. There's been a change right now. Now seeing Burton. And yeah, he's in the key. They're a little bit too close to the ropes. You notice Yamazaki's pushing away from the ropes. Yeah, getting it back into that all-important zone where, as you say, there's nowhere to run. You just got to fight. Actually, the Japanese team shouldn't be fighting in the middle of the ring. What they should be doing is fighting along the edge of the ropes. So in case they throw a kick and their opponent catches it and tries to drag him down, they can escape to the rope. As for the Americans, I think they want to fight in the middle of the ring. They want to take control of the ring. They're bigger, they're stronger. They want to take them down and wrestle. Right. <laughs> now, Burton's throwing some knees, which obviously have very little meaning. But that full Nelson has a lot of meaning. And he actually takes Yamazaki over with a German suplex hold, and he throws him on the back of his neck. And he scores it down from the suplex. That's what I said, the suplex, all the wrestling aspect, the suplex and the groundwork. This is quite exciting. There's only three points in it now. And Yamazaki, ooh, yes. spinning back kick. Yes! Oh, he doesn't right. hurt Gary, but he stuns him. Now he's trying to clinch, which he shouldn't be doing. Gary takes him over. Every single time. Yamazaki's in trouble. And all forearm, looks mad. Forearm, belly to back, German suplex. It's Here committed. we go. Referee Wada should step in. He might want to stop it. That's the second ooh. one. Oh, look at Burton. Burton can sense one, victory. Two, All right, three, can sense that, victory. That four, looks like it's it. Five, two of Gary's belly to back German suplexes. I don't see how anybody can get up from that. A major it looks he's looks finished. Into the count. Well, well, well. And the American team take it. Gary Albright and Tom Burton come out on top on this one. Look at this. Take a look at this last German suplex. German Boom. You see that head snap? Okay, he wants Takata, just like he said on the mic, he wants Takata. Well, I can't to see it. 
That's the way it's done. American style. Take names and kick butt. As Yamazaki recovers, the stage is set now for the showdown that everyone wants. That's Takada against Gary Albright. That's what I'm really looking forward to, is having a one-on-one -on -one fight with Takada.